Good morning. It's 10 o'clock, and you're listening to Centennial College Radio News. I'm Drew Berner, here with Murray Crawford and Laura Stanley. It's currently 8 degrees and sunny, and the mercury is well on its way to a balmy high of 16 today. Here are your headlines. Canada's top general is stepping down. The RCMP is putting election spending under the microscope. Four alleged terrorists are free this morning. And some Canadian retailers are halting the sale of plastic goods. Now to our top story. Canada's military is without a leader this morning. General Rick Hillier announced his retirement as head of Canada's military Tuesday afternoon. After three years on the job, his decision becomes effective in July. Hillier was the mastermind behind Canada's mission in Afghanistan. Often outspoken, many see him as responsible for arming soldiers with better equipment. Prime Minister Harper must accept Hillier's resignation before a successor can be announced. The Conservative Party's spending during the last federal election is drawing intense scrutiny today. The RCMP carried out a search warrant on the Conservative Party's Ottawa headquarters yesterday. The raid came at the request of Election Commissioner William Corbett, but the reason for it remains shrouded in secrecy. Some have speculated that the search stemmed from allegations of suspicious campaign spending during the 2000 election. Elections Canada official André Thuin was seen leaving the offices with a box, but he would only admit that it was holding documents. A case against 18 alleged terrorists hit a snag yesterday. Four of the men in custody were released as charges against them were stayed. The men, who were arrested during a raid in August 2006, spent 17 months behind bars. They were arrested for allegedly plotting a terrorist attack against a Canadian target, even though the attack was never carried out. Canadian consumers can expect to see some empty shelves at major retailers today. Hudson's Bay Company, Forzani Group, and Canadian Tire Corporation announced yesterday that they would pull products containing bisphenol A from their shelves. The move comes in anticipation of a Health Canada announcement on the synthetic chemical. Bisphenol A is a key ingredient in shatterproof plastic. It can be found in everything from baby bottles to CDs. And staying with retailers, Canada's stores may be under attack, as some believe that shoplifters are getting bolder than ever. Patrick Clark reports. That's the sounds you hear after a young woman stuffs a small blouse inside her bag and then walks out of an old Navy store at the Eaton Centre. But get this, the sales associates do nothing, and neither do the supervisors or the manager do anything. Nasr Sharif is the manager. To be honest, we have security workers that we do hire that do that and deal with shoplifters, but we honestly believe that the best way to prevent shoplifting is to give customers great customer service. Sharif says the alarm is meant to scare customers, not catch them if they do steal something. Only a security guard or police officer has the authority to do so. Maninad Jaffe, supervisor of a shopper's drug mart, says the policy also ensures workers are safe on the job. If we saw a shoplifter, we weren't supposed to do anything because, number one, as employees, we weren't allowed to stop anybody from leaving the store. Number two, it was a policy not to get involved because it, uh, it could hurt us like, physically. ShopRetailerLoss.com reports that shoplifting in Canada is one of the major sources of loss for the retail industry, costing it approximately $3 million in daily losses. I am Patrick George Clark reporting for Centennial College Radio News. And those are your headlines. Here's Murray with sports. Thanks, Drew, and good day, sports fans. I've got all the Stanley Cup playoff action right here for you. In the only original six matchup, the Montreal Canadiens edged the Boston Bruins 1-0. The only goal came in the second period from Patrice Brisebois. Goalie Carey Price picked up his first career playoff shutout. The Habs have now pushed the Bruins to the brink of elimination with a 3-1 series lead. Game 5 goes tomorrow at 7 Eastern. The other Canadian matchup saw the Sharks even the series at 2 on a goal with 10 seconds left to play from Joe Thornton. Patrick Marlowe and Ryan Klo added two, added the other two while Jerome McGinley and Dion Phaneuf scored for Calgary. The Flames had just 10 shots on net, but had a lead with 5 minutes to go in the third period. Game 5 goes tomorrow at 10 Eastern. The Philadelphia Flyers picked up their second win in a row, and their first at home, against the Washington Capitals 6-3 last night. With the win, the Flyers take a 2-1 series lead. Uh, Daniel Briere led the Flyers with 2 goals and an assist. The other goals came from Scott Hartnell, Sammy Captain, Mike Richards, and Mike Knubel. The Caps' offense came from Mike Green, Brooks Locke, and Eric Furr, who had a goal each. Game 4 goes tomorrow at 7 Eastern.
In other action, the Anaheim Ducks clawed back into the series against the Dallas Stars with a 4-2 win. Chris Pronger sparked the offense with two goals and assist, with Todd Marchand and Ryan Getzlaff contributing a goal each. The Stars could not score until the third period when Brendan Morrow scored two power play goals. With the series now 2-1 in favor of Dallas, they resume hostilities tomorrow night at 8 Eastern in the Lone Star State. And fresh off an overtime loss last night against the Minnesota Wild, the Colorado Avalanche won with purpose in a 5-1 victory over the Wild. The Avs got scoring from Andrew Brunette, Wojtek Wolski, Tyler Arneson, Ruslan Saleh, and Milan Heduk. Minnesota's only goal came from Miko Koivu, and the series now tied at 2-2. Game 5 goes tomorrow at 9 Eastern. Tonight, the Ottawa Senators will, Senators will do their best to prolong their cup run as they try to pick up their first win of the playoffs. That game goes at 7 Eastern. As well, the New York Rangers take on the New Jersey Devils at 7 Eastern. The uh, Rangers currently lead that series 2-1. And the Detroit Red Wings will face the Nashville Predators. Detroit is now 2-1 in the se- ahead in that series. Puck drop is at 9 Eastern. In baseball, the Toronto Blue Jays rebounded from a loss Monday with an 11-3 win over the Baltimore Orioles. Second baseman Aaron Hill had hit a solo home run in the second. Sean Markham picked up the win with four strikeouts over six and two-third innings. The loss went to Steve Traxel, who is a former Jay. The Jays return home to face the Texas Rangers tonight. The Jays will send Jesse Litch to the mound, while the Rangers will counter with Kaysen Gabbard. First pitch is at 7 Eastern. The Toronto Raptors will finish up the season tonight against the Chicago Bulls. The Raptors have already locked up the sixth seed in playoffs and a series with the Orlando Magic. The first NFL regular season game held in Canada now has an official date. The NFL released its 2008 schedule yesterday with the game at the Rogers Centre set to take place on December 7th between the Buffalo Bills and their division rival, the Miami Dolphins. Tiger Woods will miss four to six weeks to recover from an injured left knee. This could threaten him defending his title titles at the World, at the Players' Championship and the Wachovia Championship. And Canadian diver Alexandre Despati will miss four to six weeks with a broken foot. The hope is that he will, he will still be ready for the Olympics. The Olympic trials set to start June 20th in Victoria. And exercise is for everyone, or at least that's, a cor- that's what Wave Vibration is promis- promising its clients. Sarah Kunar reports. <coughs> That is the sound of a whole body vibration machine. Vibration technology is a fairly new invention. It was introduced in the 1990s in Europe and was used mainly for Olympic athletes. Now, vibration exercise machines are available to anyone. Wave Exercise created their own machine called the Wave, a vibrating plate you stand on in different positions to target different muscles. Dr. Jasper Sidhu, the clinical director at the Wave Center in Vaughan, has had the opportunity to train many different types of people on the machine. Wave vibration exercise is something that's been developed to really target a lot of different populations out there. Basically, a lot of the populations that can't exercise or have the inability to exercise due to medically associated conditions. It can also benefit a lot of the more of the higher end extreme athletes who want to shave a second or a microsecond off their running time. There are many ways to use the wave. The trainers are there to help each person find their perfect routine. John Shearer, a full-time trainer at the Centre in Vaughan, has seen many benefits when using the wave. Alright, so as a trainer, uh, relative to traditional strength training and conditioning, it allows me to see a wide, wider variety of people. And the training process is expedited, it takes a lot less time, and you have a lot of other benefits associated, whether it's increases in blood flow, in circulation, uh, or just you know stimulating muscle fibers that, that weren't previously active. 15 minutes on the wave is equal to working out for one hour at the gym. For people on the go, this could be an alternative way of getting into shape. I am Sarah Kunar, reporting for Centennial College Radio News. And that's all for sports. We'll take a quick break and be back with Laura Stanley in entertainment. My husband is a couch potato. In 14 years, he's worn out three recliners. Can't remember our anniversary, but he's got the TV schedule memorized. One time, I took the batteries out of his remote control, and he called 911. Last week, he came home from work, plops down on his recliner, throws it into liftoff position, and tells me that his boss is giving a dinner party and we're supposed to bring dessert. So I said, great, what are you going to make? That brought him to his feet. He goes, gee, honey, I thought you were going to make your famous strawberry shortcake. Think again, I said. He's your boss. You cook something. He was smarter than I thought. 
went to Winn-Dixie Deli Bakery and picked up a cheesecake. Well, his boss's wife raved over it, so he says, thank you, I made it from scratch. Then she asked for the recipe. Welcome back. In entertainment, the last member of Walt Disney's so-called group, Nine Old Men, has died. Animator and directi- director Ollie Johnston died Monday of natural causes at a long-term care facility in Washington. Johnston contributed to classic Disney movies such as Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Alice in Wonderland, Cinderella, and Pinocchio. Johnston was 95. Actor and comedian Bill Cosby made a hip-hop album. That's right, you heard me correctly, a hip-hop album. The 70-year-old star of The Cosby Show is set to release his first hip-hop album next month. Cosby hopes his music will help listeners raise their self-esteem and confidence. Cosby also said this may be the first of several hip-hop ventures. Centennial's HP Science and Technology Center is now being used as the backdrop in some scenes from the film Ruiner, directed by Centennial College grad Charlie DeVito. Rachel Munez reports. That's the reaction Charlie DeVito hopes to get from audiences when they see Ruiner, his first feature-length film. Though he just graduated from Centennial in December, he's already here at the HP campus directing some of his film's final scenes. DeVito says he chose to shoot at the HP Center because the building is so different. The architecture here is great. It, it really looks like a... It looks like a crazy science fiction movie. That's not the only way Centennial has helped DeVito with his movie, which is about a young couple's meeting with a serial killer. You know, when you had teachers like Chris and uh, Chris Terry and Shell Reisler, you know, it's really, you know, they, they give you the tools here. And, you know, it's too bad that people don't know about, more about Centennial because, you know, we're, we, we leave this program really knowing, like, what to do. Though shooting has gone smoothly overall, associate producer Keegan Sand says the film has had some problems, including crew members not showing up. He says DeVito's commitment has been what's kept the film together so far. Having the director be as put together as he has been, um, if, if he wasn't you know, so put together, the shoot would have been much, much more complicated and harder to, to do. We, we, we would have been delayed and behind shots. DeVito hopes to release Ruiner on Halloween at Bloor Cinema in downtown Toronto. I'm Rachel Munns, Centennial College Radio News. And good news for Lost fans, the hit show about a group of stranded plane crash survivors will return on April 24th. Fans should also be happy to know that there's going to be a three-hour season finale that will air in two parts. The first hour of the finale will air on May 15th, and the final two hours will air on May 29th. And that's all for entertainment. Now it's back to Drew for a final word. Thanks, Laura. That's all the news we have for now. Stay tuned for another broadcast at 10.30 at ondemand.centennialcollege.ca. For the rest of the news team here at Centennial College, I'm Drew Berner. Thanks for stopping by, and have a great day.